So we're doing something kind of weird with this uh, batch of beer right here. I'm gonna do an overnight mash. It's something I read about recently on the website Brewlosophy. Um, the process goes something like this. You heat your water up to strike temp, grind your grains, add the grains, stir them in, uh, allow the temperature to stabilize, and then you just leave. You leave it sit overnight and come back the next morning and then finish out the batch of beer. According to the Brewlosophy website, the beer was indistinguishable, uh, statistically indistinguishable by the tasting panel from the exact same beer that was brewed with a traditional 60 minute mash. All right, it looks like the mash temp is stabilized at 152, so I'm gonna go home and get some sleep, and then uh, come back and wrap it up tomorrow. All right, uh, next day, it's about 10.30 in the morning, and uh, let's see here. 10 and a half hours have gone by. Kettle temp dropped from 152 down to 130. And what I need to do now is kick the element on to 100% power, boil this thing, and wrap it up. So I'm gonna take a gravity sample here real quick. I'm also kind of curious what it tastes like at this point. Tastes really no different from any other uh, project we've done, so I suppose that's a good sign. I just wanted to make a note uh, that this is how I'm going to have the kettle set up during the boil. A lot of folks will tell you that. Um, this is improper practice and setting the lid up like this during a boil is absolutely going to destroy your beer uh, because it's going to have uh, high levels of DMS in it after you're done. We found that leaving a gap here between the lid and the kettle just this big is plenty enough space for the vapor to escape and vaporize all of the DMS in the wort. Okay. Our boil is up. Turn the element off. Okay, done with the boil. All my lines, pump, and chiller are hooked up. Condenser water is turned on. I'm going to circulate the work through the chiller, cool it down just a little bit. I think I'm gonna let it get down to Actually, that's good. I wanted it to be like the 180 range. So I'm gonna add my hops here. Usually, uh, often use pelletized hops with this. Suppose I need a funnel or something. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
the water that I'm circulating through, I'm just going to pop it down into the hop basket just to make sure that the wort is sort of interacting with the hops there. Transfer that flavor. So I'm going to let these uh, chill here while this is cooling down. Most of the hops made it in there, but definitely had some spillage here. It's okay because I have a bazooka screen in the bottom as well as the hop filter here. So it's been kind of hanging out here slowly chilling for 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and ramp the pump all the way up so we get maximum chillage here. I'm going to wait until we get down to, actually I'm going to wait until we have 60 degrees. 65 degrees on the output on my um, therm on the chiller here, and then I'll go ahead and start filling up the fermenter. One mistake I made is I forgot to take the yeast out of the refrigerator, so I'm just gonna put this in my back pocket and hopefully it warms up slowly enough, but also fully enough to not cause any problems. About 68. And and uh, whoo, ended up with about a 1047 final gravity. This one's going to be a little bit uh, hotter than the last. Totally did not hit the record button before pitching that, dang it. All right, whoo, uh, done. All right, that's a wrap on this one. I'm going to throw it in the fermentation fridge and we'll revisit it in about a week to dry hop it.